All right, let's talk positive conflict. This is episode number three in the series of capabilities for new era leaders. So we've talked about uncertainty and ambiguity. We've talked about personal resilience. Today, I want to talk about conflict. Conflict. Um, something that I'm not great at dealing with. Just putting my hand up and saying that I, I'm a conflict avoider from way back and I'm a people pleaser from way back. So um, this is something that I struggle with constantly. But I think it's really, really important uh, to continue to work on this in ourselves and to cultivate this uh, this notion of how do we have conflict in a positive way. Um, you know, everybody's prepared to talk about diversity. Everybody's prepared to say this lovely, warm, fuzzy word, diversity, and uh, and and to aspire to this and and to sort of put diversity up there on a pedestal. And absolutely, we want to be doing that. But equally, let's not kid ourselves. When we're dealing with people who have different perspectives and opinions, diverse perspectives and opinions, and upbringings, and backgrounds, it's going to create conflict. And conflict's not a dirty word. It's simply that we need to be able to work out how to have positive conflicts in our teams. And so a lot of, you know, when I start to talk about agile portfolio management or um, agile business ag business agility and ways of working in a responsive organization, often what we're talking about is bringing together forums where you open up a space for conflict because we want those diverse perspectives. We want those diverse opinions because that's going to help us make better decisions. So positive conflict is really, really important. And um, I think it's one of those misunderstood kind of themes. It's, I don't know if I've told this story before, but I worked with two very dear friends and colleagues um, who had differing, differing views or differing methods on how to get to responsive organization. Both of these um, people were amazing uh, mentors and leaders for me in, in my life and work. And, um, and what was really funny was that there was this period in time where we're all working within the same organization and somehow started to eventuate that, that it started to eventuate that the battle lines were being drawn. And it was fascinating to observe. So here are two people that have two conflicting ideas about how to get results. And they would be vocal about that. They would openly discuss that. Um, you know, I wouldn't say that the debates got heated, but they were passionate. You know, we're, we're talking about this and that and, you know, getting into the nitty gritty. And, uh, and what happened was that Within this organization, we watched battle lines drawn and people started taking sides. And I remember um, speaking to one of these people and he said, I actually had to ask Dave out to lunch the other day. And, 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 and we sat down and, and sort of said, we're friends, right? <laughs> and so the two of them had got together and said, you know, like, we get along, yeah? Yeah. And we have different opinions, yeah? Yeah. But we agree on the ultimate goal. Yeah. And so they'd had this really bizarre uh, kind of lunch meet where both of them had got into the confusion that they were experiencing about why the rest of the organization had suddenly seen them as, you know, two opposing sides, people taking sides and, you know, I'm on this one or that one and like never the two shall meet. And so these, these two people had had to have this sit down and sort of work through it themselves and their own confusion and, and, and the misunderstanding that everybody else had had, um, had had. And I remember it just struck me as we, we giggled about it for a long time. And it was, it was also something fundamental in that. And it was this idea that, you know, here we have a relationship which is very high functioning. So diverse opinions, differing opinions on methodology to get similar results or, or you know, to get results, um, the ability to have open discussion, the ability to demonstrate conflict in public, um, this is a very high functioning relationship. And yet, the way that it had been interpreted within the organization was that this was a breakdown and this was war. Like that was the word that was used was war. And, and it was it was such a, an interesting idea to me that you know here was this really high functioning relationship and yet our interpretation of it was that this was a bad thing and it sort of struck me that we have come to this point where um, potentially we start to perceive all conflict as a bad thing and so how do we get into that space of positive conflict 
like how do we start to cultivate that within our teams because it's important right it's important for us to be able to share opinions to learn from each other and that means we don't always agree and we want to start to cultivate those forums where people can disagree and where we can get to a better outcome and it may not be consensus but we can get to a better outcome through the sharing and the the curiosity around those diverse opinions it's really really important um so yeah positive conflicts a thing how are you cultivating that in your organization how are you cultivating that in yourself in terms of your ability to show up i just show up on a meeting with a client just this week we were five minutes into a 40 slide deck um, and this person said something and I had to kind of time out and go look I will never coach this I don't endorse this at all like not not a thing that I do need to put that on the table for you so that you understand that that's where I'm coming from and equally continue reference that in your decision making it's still your choice about which way you go but you need to know that I am very much a no on this and so, and that's hard, right? Like, how do we show up in a way that is not completely cutting somebody off at the knees, but actually generating more discussion and generating a bigger and a better outcome? Um, that particular conversation led to a whole lot more investigation of what we had in common and where we overlapped and what can we go forward on together, even though that piece might still be in conflict or, um, you know, we have a disagreement over it. But there's all these other things that we still agree on and we have commonality and we need to progress. So starting to weave this idea of positive conflict into your organization is really, really important. Um, and I want to call out a couple of anti-patterns too. So first up, bringing together a forum of people, um, bringing together teams to just have an event when a decision's already been made. No, it's not positive. It's it might be conflict, it's not helping anyone. It's not actively generating a different outcome. The decision's already been made. Like, not a not a good look. And, uh, you know, sometimes we will call together a forum where it feels like we're making no progress and the team is just venting. And we need to walk that balance, that fine line around, is this something that people just need to get out of their system because we are going to get to an outcome? Like, do I hold this space and allow us to get to wherever we need to get to, or do I actually need to shut this space down because it's not helpful and it's not um, it's not getting there. And there, there's a lot on the inside around your ability to deal with conflict and, and, and to turn it into a generative discussion that goes on with when, whether, whether and when you make that call about those decision forums, right? Um, the other anti-pattern, diversity on paper. Um, you know, we... What we're looking for is true diversity, and that often doesn't feel like what we think it should. Often true diversity of thought, perspective, operating style, communication style, feels like friction. I have wonderful people that I have worked with um, who, it takes me 20 minutes to get on a level around how do we, how do we get to that point where we can actually speak to each other. And that's just about fundamentally different operating styles and communication styles. Before we even get anywhere near some kind of disagreement on, usually, my kind of high-level conceptual thing and, and their need for detail. <laughs> it's usually the conflict. But, you know, it, it can take me 20 minutes to get on a level with someone where we're actually in a positive conversation space where we can actually communicate so that we can talk about the disagreement that we've got rather than just butt heads. Uh, another anti-pattern is the decision making by consensus. So in this effort to sort of share and reconcile and bring everybody's views together, uh, you know, often when we're starting through some of these processes, we will, we will swing the pendulum from top-down kind of command and control dictatorship <laughs> through to absolute consensus. You know, and the reality is it's neither of those two extremes, right? We've got to find that balance point in the middle. And so when you're working with this concept, think really hard. Like examine yourself around conflict, how you deal with it, your own uh, activation points, what gets you riled up, how you tend to respond. What is your pattern of behavior when you are under pressure or when someone is in conflict with you or has a different perspective? 
knowing your predisposition to those patterns of behavior can help you to catch it when you're falling into that pattern and it may not be helpful. And then cultivating those forums so that that diversity can come through without prejudicing for consensus or prejudicing for um, you know authority in the hierarchy of somebody making a decision or prejudicing for making a decision too early. How do we start to cultivate those forums so that we can bring that conflict in and do it in a positive way um, so that it's not about shooting somebody's ideas down but it's actually about a bit of robust discussion and a bit of kind of working through these ideas and creating a safe space. Um, that's, I mean, that's a whole nother conversation in itself, but creating relative safety in that conversation, um, which may mean things like being conscious of the power dynamics in the room, being conscious of, you know, potentially some of the stuff that's happening outside of our work environment that might be influencing people and their ability to show up fully or their ability to disclose fully, you know, communication styles, all of these things. We need to consider that when we're talking about setting up a, a situation where we can have relative safety in some of this conflict. So, yeah, that's it for me today. That one's a fun one. This, this is like, this is a huge one for me, is this constant deal with conflict, work with conflict, <laughs> don't avoid it. Um, so if you're out there and you're struggling, I feel you, I feel your pain. Um, you know, people pleasers from way back unite. Uh, but yeah, that was what I wanted to share today. So. Go back, take a look at yourself, take a look at how you deal with conflict, take a look about how look at how conflict is showing up in your teams, in your organization, take a look at your patterns of response through those conflicts and what tends to happen. So remember, we're not looking for the individual outcome, we're looking for those systemic outcomes, we're looking for those patterns that help us understand team dynamic on a broader level. Um, and yeah, I hope wherever you are in the world today, you're having an awesome, awesome day. I will see you again next week.